After locating the sensor on the engine, the cabling can be run to the display unit. And as you can see, the sensor cable is run parallel to the factory wiring loom from the engine, then along this brace and down the firewall and into the cabin. I slid the cable in via the grommet where the air conditioning drain exits. Sensor cable then emerges out under the dash in the passenger footwell. After pulling the cable through, I'm going to feed it up and over the transmission tunnel to the driver's side. And once the display is located on the dash, the loom should exit under the dash in the driver's footwell. And here you can see the three pairs of cables, each clearly marked for easy connection of the sensor to the power supply. White pairs marked as sensor one, the yellow pairs marked as two, but this is a single sensor system, so I'm gonna blank off the yellow cables with tape, but you can add a, the second sensor if you want. Now I need to connect the white cables to the sensor cables. You can see that this is the cable I fed over the transmission tunnel. And I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna use the two connectors supplied in the kit. You can also solder and heat shrink if you've got the skills or the equipment. Connectors supplied are simple and reliable. You need one per wire. Just slide in one white wire and then one sensor wire and you'll need a pair of pliers to firmly push the orange plunger to crimp the wires together. And give the wires a pull to test. And now repeat the second white wire and the second sensor wire. And again, crimp at the pliers and give them a pull to test. Now we have to connect the supply to the cables marked 12 to 24 volts. Now I've already connected the black cable to a chassis bolt for ground or earth. Okay, and I'm also, I've also connected this red cable to the power supply using a fuse tap. These aren't supplied as the fuses vary in design. They're only a few dollars, but they make installation really simple and easy. It's like a double adapter, that plugs into the interior fuse box, and it takes the supply from the existing fuse location but adds a second fuse for the engine guard. Now I'm going to use more of these crimp connectors to make it simple to demonstrate, but you can solder if you prefer. So just connect the red to red from the display mark 12 to 24 volts and crimp or solder as before. Test. And then join the black to black, which is ground or earth. And again, slide in the two wires and crimp with the pliers. That's it, we're done. And now I'm gonna show you how to use a fuse tap. So to begin, you need to remove the cover from the fuse box, and we're using a fuse tap to connect into an existing circuit. It just pushes in like a fuse, and the supply cable to the display just crimps into the fuse fly lead. As you can see here, just crimp in the red wire. All right, on the fuse tap, as you can see, there are two fuse positions, one for the original fuse that pushes in, and also a second fuse for the circuit to the engine guard. They're really quick and easy to use, and they push back into the same location.